closed the door really quietly. I mean, I wasn't late, but the house was dark. And, you know, it's never good to wake up your younger siblings or parents. But when I looked around, I saw that the TV was on in the family room, and I walked to the doorway, and there was my mother in her nightgown, sniffling. So that, and I said, Mom, what's wrong? And she said, your father and I are getting a divorce. And I thought, wow, so what's going to happen to me? I found out a couple days, I found out over the next couple days, my father had decided to marry one of his medical school students. And my mother decided that she couldn't possibly be a divorcee in Rochester, Minnesota. So her plan was to take me and my siblings hundreds of miles away to Westchester County, New York, where I was going to finish high school. So I did what any reasonable 15 and a half year old would do. I said, like hell, I'm not going, I'm not going. You wanna wreck the family, that's fine. But all I got left now are my friends. Wiener, and Fontana Face, and Big Aim. So that's it. They didn't even flinch. So I thought, all right, I gotta kick it up a notch. My mother had a thing for 70s wicker furniture. So I said, I'm not going, I'm not going, and I put my foot through one of the wicker chairs. She said, Jenny, what are you doing? but nothing changed. I thought, man, I got really got to ramp this up or I'm going to be dragged out of here. So I went and put my fist through a window and said, I'm not going, I'm not going. That did it. I wasn't going. So a couple of months later, I'm standing in the garage. My siblings are there, my mom's there day before a moving van had taken half our stuff away and to the new place. And so my father said to my siblings, I love you, I love you, I'll see you soon, I'm gonna miss you, and he hugged them both. And my mother came over and gave me a peck on the cheek and said, goodbye, Jenny. And they got into the station wagon, they pulled out of the driveway, and they started to drive down the street, and my father put his hands on his head and said, what have I done? And then he ran out of the garage and went up to his room and shut the door, and I'm standing in the garage going, wow, I don't really feel like calling Wiener or Fontana Face. I don't know what I'd want them to do. I said, maybe what I should do is Think about what I'm going to eat for dinner. So a couple of months later, he marries the medical school student, who I find out has a name, Chris. And oh, yeah, she's a born and bred Minnesotan, see? She, oh, yeah, she sure is. And she moves into the house, and I become aggressively sullen. I scowl all the time. I never, never come home by curfew. Everything's one word, one word answers. Yeah, no, out, maybe. My father and Chris and I are then in the kitchen and he's got his trench coat on and he has his briefcase and his overnight bag and he's going on a business trip. And suddenly it dawns on me, I am gonna be alone with her for how long? Maybe two days? I'm gonna blow this shit up. <laughs> so I turned to Chris and I said, you wrecked our family, you ruined my life. I can't stand it. And I stomped out of the kitchen and I went up to my room 
And my father left, and I heard the taxi door slam. I sat up there for a while. But you know, I didn't have a TV in there. So I, event so I came downstairs, and I flipped on the ABC Sunday night movie, and I sat on the couch with my arms folded, watching TV. And then Chris comes in, and she says, See, Jen, can I make you some popcorn? Yeah. <laughs> so Chris goes into the kitchen, and the phone rings. She picks it up. Oh, yeah, hi, hello, how, oh, good. Yeah, yeah, she's fine. Yeah, I'm making her some popcorn. And Chris was right. I was fine. Thank you.